Hi everybody, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. For the second time today, <laughs> you guys probably don't know this, but I'm filming this for the second time. Oh, the joys of editing when your audio gets corrupted and it's not salvageable. <laughs> but that's okay, because luckily we're here to talk, to talk about a topic that I enjoy quite a bit, and that is going to be a review of The Haunting of Gillespie House by Darcy Coates. This was a pretty good book. It was in the middle of the spectrum for me as far as Darcy Coates books go. Um, I didn't love it. I didn't dislike it. It was just kind of in the middle. But the things that Darcy Coates does well, she continued to do well in this book. So let me tell you what the plot line is. In The Haunting of Gillespie House, we are following Elle. And she is doing a house-sitting job for the Gillespies, whose marriage is in trouble. And they are going off to try to reconnect to salvage their relationship. And she's house-sitting for them. But they have not warned her of all of the strange happenings that will occur in this house. There's creaking, there's footsteps, there's all kinds of weird noises coming from a locked bedroom right next to Elle's. And, and she begins to get very, very um, creeped out and discouraged. She even calls Mrs. Gillespie a couple of times to be like, hey, I think somebody might be in the house. I keep hearing this. I keep hearing that. And Mrs. Gillespie doesn't want these phone calls, okay? She is annoyed to the 10th degree. She's just like, for the scratching noises, just put out rat poison. The rats are back. I mean, she seems a little irritated that while she's trying to do something as important to save her relationship that this girl is calling and bugging her with things that she doesn't think are important that she doesn't think mean anything at all so Elle starts doing a little bit of research on the house and she goes back in the family line and discovers that it was once inhabited by a man named Jonathan Gillespie and he was a mean old codger he was like involved in the occult and all of these satanic rituals and was basically raising a family for sacrifice. He had a ton of children, was not fatherly towards them at all. And Elle starts getting haunted by the ghost of one particular girl, one of his daughters. And this girl is clearly trying to reach out to her and get her to and get her help in some manner um the plot line in, a, in and of itself was good i will give it that so <clears throat> let's talk about why i consider this to just be an average read for darcy Coates. um positives positives again is her atmosphere she is so good at atmosphere she is so good with her imagery creating a, you know, such a nice setting that really makes you feel closed in. Like you feel what the characters feel every single time. This has been consistent with everything that I have read from her. She is so, so good at this. She writes very well-rounded characters. And Elle was a very extremely likable character for me. I will say with the negatives... It didn't really feel like this book was trying anything new. And there weren't, for it being cozy horror, there were not a lot of spooky instances. I mean, there were things that were obviously supposed to be spooky, but they didn't really grab me. They weren't, to me, they just weren't spooky. And Maybe somebody that doesn't read horror as much would be scared by that, but it's like, for me, it was just kind of like, what was that? Like, I was supposed to be scared at scratching in the walls. I mean, I wasn't. <laughs> so, um, I wasn't crazy about, like, hidden passageways that were found. 
it just seemed out of place in this book. It didn't seem like the type of setting where those things would exist. And I know that it was there to further the story. I mean, it was pretty obvious why it was there, but it just did not feel like it should be, if that makes any sense. It, it, it wasn't cohesive. Um, another positive would be the length of the story. It was, it was relatively short. I'm, I can't remember the exact page count, but it was not overly long. And it's like she told the story in the way that it needed to be told. There wasn't a whole lot of extra fillery things in between events that were, that were padding the, padding the word count. So it's like that. I really appreciate it because that does drive me crazy a lot in books when there's a whole lot of nothing in between events. And this is something that I think that Darcy Coates is good with in general. She just, she gets to the point and like, I, that's, that's just something that I appreciate. Um, I feel like if this story had been longer, it probably would have been very, very lowly rated. Um, but it was only as long as it needed to be. So that it had it that going for it. Uh, I know it sounds like I didn't like this book and that's not the case. I did. It's just, I like some of her other stuff a little bit better. Um, it, but this was a four star read. I still enjoyed it a lot. And I still want you guys to send in those Darcy Coates requests. Tell me which ones that you liked the most so that I can give them a try. And for that matter, it doesn't have to be Darcy Coates. Like you can re recommend any horror books that you enjoy, especially during this time gearing up for Halloween. It's the spooky season. It's the perfect time to be reviewing spooky books. So send in all the re recommendations that, that you want. I'm more than willing to, to try, try to get to as many as I can in this time frame. Um, but yeah, I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. If you liked this video, please make sure to subscribe like, comment, follow me on the social needs, click that bell if you want to be notified of all of my upcoming videos, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!